friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Agile Technical Tester. We are in chapter 4 and looking at the last topic of this chapter and this tutorial series as well that is 4.2 Service Virtualization. When it comes to service virtualization obviously the term virtual comes into picture and virtual means which is not real. And in simple terms, when you talk about virtuality, it generally means that something which cannot be done in a real environment. Probably when you talk with an example of performance testing, uh, iterating a test or executing a scenario with 100,000 users would be probably difficult or impossible in a manual or real-time scenario. Thus, we talk about virtual users or virtual scenario, or in simple terms, we can also call it as virtualization in terms of service. So when it comes to talking about such things, we do utilize a lot of virtualization or virtual services which helps to simulate our lot of activities when it comes to testing or including development as well. So as far as you are not using a real environment or the real place where you need to do this or a real scenario where you need to execute any particular test, then you call it as a service virtualization. Of course, to do this job, you would need an environment which is similar to the same and you should have similar outputs with respect to the one which you would get in the real-time environment. So, service virtualization altogether helps you a lot to minimize your effort and at least create that scenario which might not be possible otherwise to do your testing and at least gain some confidence with respect to the virtual scenario and then when it goes to the real-time, you have something better to be confident about. So service virtualization really plays a vital role in terms of testing including the development and some of the complicated levels where virtualization is only your option. So when it comes to service virtualization obviously it refers to the simulation of real work which is including the behavior, data, performance and several other things. This virtual service enables development and test team to execute their task even if the actual service is still under development or not available. Now when you talk about some development aspects, we have learned about stub and drivers in the foundation level certification, where stub and drivers are the dummy modules provided to you to complete the sequence in case required to do that in testing. Testing early in the development lifecycle is difficult to accomplish with today's highly connected and interdependent development teams and system. By decoupling the teams, the system using service virtualization, teams can test their software earlier in the development lifecycle using more realistic and use case and tools. While stubs and drivers and mocks are valuable in allowing your early testing, manually created stubs are usually stateless and provide simple responses to request with fixed response time. So putting it all together, it generally helps you to understand a lot of things and gain that understanding with respect to the complexity of the modules when you deal with such uh, mocks, stubs, and drivers, which would be helpful for you to enable early testing in your life cycle. Probably otherwise you have to wait for a long time to get everything ready to start testing, and that would be probably too late to decide on anything. Additionally, yes, we are talking about some of the important aspects here that virtual services are created with help of service virtualization tool. Of course, when you talk about performance testing, you talk about clouds, everything needs some kind of application to do that job for you. Often in one of the following ways, you can create your service virtualization. That is by interpreting from data, for example, XML file, historical data from server logs or simply the simple spreadsheet of data. By monitoring network traffic, that means exercising the SUT will trigger relevant behavior of the dependent system, which is captured and modeled by the service virtualization too. By capturing from the agents, service side, server side or internal logic may not be visible on the communication messages, forcing relevant data and message to be pushed from dependent servers to be recreated as a virtual service. If none of the above applies, then the virtual service needs to be created within the project team based on the appropriate communication protocol. So in this particular section, we are trying to understand that the service which we are talking with respect to virtualization can happen in different ways by either interpreting the data, monitoring network traffic, or capturing from the agent that is like generally the server-side applications which respond to you and your queries and 
you can be uh, sure about like what kind of responses you're getting and you can at least uh, move ahead with the validation aspect. Additionally, the benefits of service virtualization include parallel development and test activities for the service under development, earlier testing of services and APIs, earlier test data backup, parallel compilation and continuous integration and test automation, earlier discovery of defects, reducing overutilization of shared resources, reducing testing costs by reducing the investment in infrastructure, enabling early non-functional testing of SUT, simplifying test environment and management, less maintenance work for test environment, low risk for data management. Now, these are some of the very critical benefits of service virtualization, which adds a lot of value to your testing process and enables you to do a lot of such tasks, which could be taking longer to be done as a part of the life cycle. But probably by having service virtualization being introduced into your organization, you can start building such things or performing such activities quite early in the life cycle. But yes, it should not be underestimated. Introducing a service virtualization could be as complex as or you know very expensive and just um, like automating a tool or introducing a tool into the organization the introduction of the service virtualization tool is just treated as the same way so it must not be underestimated the risk factors must not be underestimated and you must consider all the considerations which is required before just adopting a service virtualization process or tools so take care of that and then everything is there to assist you and help you to move ahead with your exercises and testing. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.